What are zebras in a filmmaking context? Well, after I put out my video of how to use zebras, which by the way, was my most popular video of that year, there was some confusion. A lot of people commented saying, you didn't actually tell us what zebras are. And that's definitely just an oversight on my part. You should never assume that's what, you know, the takeaway is from this. And I assumed, I assumed that if you were clicking on a video called how to use zebras in all the Sony shooting modes, you would already know what zebras are. And that's, that's on me, hands up. Uh, I, I mean, I did preface that video with this. Warning, this video gets very nerdy. But yeah, that's on me. I'm sure I can rectify it with this video and I hope this helps. I'll jump into all that in just a minute, but in case you're new around here, I'm Harv and I'm a video guy. I make videos about video. So do get subscribed if that's of interest. I put out new videos all the time, so do check that out. And as ever, I've timestamped everything in this video down below so you can just skip to the bit you want. These videos are not sponsored or brought to you by any company, except for maybe my Patreon backers. The way that works is any funds from Patreon, I put back into the channel to buy gear, I do unbiased reviews, and then I give that gear to my backers. So if that's of interest, check it out, just link below. So what are zebras? In short, they are a non-destructive overlay across your footage that give you exposure information. Now, what does that mean? Well, it's a function or tool which is available in cameras which you can toggle on and off to help you expose your footage. As ugly as zebras look when you're viewing them on screen, they never make their way onto your final footage, so don't worry about that. You can change the brightness in which the zebras appear, and this is usually represented as a percentage, zero being completely pitch black, and then 100 being blown out white to the point that you can't recover that. And just for a little bit of context, skin tones usually sit somewhere around 60 to 70%. Never fear, I will get more into just how you can use these to help expose your footage in just a minute. But first, why zebras? Why do they look like that? Well, zebras are easy to see. They're high contrast, a uniform pattern, plus moving. You can see how they're just constantly shifting. All these things add up to something that you just couldn't possibly miss when looking at the back of your camera, and hopefully something that you can find really easy to interpret and use to your advantage. Anyway, now moving on to how to use zebras in the real world. And in my guide, I talk about how there are infinite ways that you could use zebras to expose your footage. But in fact, there are two kind of most useful, I would say. And the first one is how to use zebras to protect highlights. And the other way is using zebras to expose your skin tones. So let's get into that now. To protect your highlights, just set your zebras to the upper limit of the mode you shoot in on your camera. Do Google it if you're not sure, but it's usually around 100%. That way, as long as you can't see zebras on your rear screen, you know your highlights won't be blown out. And then to expose skin tones, I'd set your zebras for around 70%. And as long as you don't see zebras on your subject's skin, your exposure will be in good shape. Obviously, I go into these techniques in far greater depth in my guide, but that gives you some idea of how how you can use zebras. The really cool thing about zebras is just how customizable they are. You know, there, there are infinite ways that you can use zebras to, to help you expose your footage. And one thing I'd say to do is to assign zebras to toggle on and off to one of your custom buttons on your camera, and that just makes it super easy and just accessible when you need it. That's exactly what I do when I'm traveling around and using a really minimal setup with no external monitor, so I don't have access to my normal uh, exposure tools that I prefer, like waveforms and false color. So just do that, and then you can keep your setup small, and you've got some really good information via the Zebras. Zebras now should be available on almost all cameras that come out these days. And the reason I think manufacturers choose to do this instead of adding things like waveforms and false color that I just mentioned, is that they're just so easy to spot on small screens. If you are a Sony user, I'd certainly recommend using Zebras instead of looking at the Sony exposure meter that you'll see. I feel very passionate about that meter and you know why it shouldn't be used for videography anyway. I, I felt so passionate about it, I actually made a whole video about that and I definitely recommend you check it out because it turned out to be 
pretty interesting. Anyway, now it's time to take everything we've learned in this video and, you know, grind it up and make a tasty espresso for you to take away. Zebras are a non-destructive overlay to communicate exposure information. Zebras are available in almost all cameras these days, so my advice is to look for them in the settings and assign them to a custom button. Zebras are so accurate easy to understand and easy to use. They are especially great for exposing skin tones and protecting highlights, as I mentioned. Zebras are also quite customizable and the number of ways you can use them to expose your footage is just mind boggling. In my opinion, zebras are a far better option than using an exposure meter like you'll see sometimes on your camera screen. It just gives you so much more information. And to say they're more accurate is just a huge understatement. Anyway, that's it for now. I just hope you found this interesting and helpful. The question of the day is, which exposure tool do you favor? And you know, why is that? What else shall I cover in this kind of subject matter? Bearing in mind, I've already done videos called, what is our IRE? What are waveforms? What is false color? And many more, do check them out and um, yeah. Let me know about that, I'll see you in the comments. I've now filmed over 300 of these videos, would you believe it? Of which the algorithm has recommended this video for you and the one underneath is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.